first off, there has been another murder on this one of the pages, which is great and exciting, and it means that we're like getting closer to figuring out the different stories. Second, and more importantly, welcome uh, to any of the returning viewers, but also anyone who's new. Happy to have you here today. We're gonna go to another four pages of Kane's Jawbone, where we slowly try to figure out the riddle to the murder mystery that is probably one of the hardest literary puzzles out there. So very quickly, how this works, I go through four pages, but I mainly just mention the most important clues and leads that I find on there. Not all of them, because I feel like that just would take up so much time. Um, you can find all of the clues and leads that I found in the link in the description box below. So you can go check that out or keep it next to this video as well. If you're interested, because I do mention some of the things, uh, obviously on the page, but also some extra information you will get from the clues that I mention. Then, we'll just get started on the first page. And also the most exciting one, the one with the murder, which is page 80. All right, so this is a page I do mention a few words and things, uh, but also like, yeah, clearly the murder is here on this one. Do we know who was murdered? Yes. That is, Sir Paul is murdered by who? I don't know. I have no idea. All I know about this person is that the, that person is friends with Henry and is, has a crush on May, which is a female character that we've mentioned in previous videos and other pages. Um, so that's that one. Obviously, the next question is, how did this happen? Um, that is by Acon Aconitum. I don't know if you say that right, but it's a type of flower and um, it has medicinal qualities on very small dosages. But if you happen a lot with these type of things that we know if you're somewhat aware of herbs that in big dosages or bigger, they're poisonous. And that's the same thing with this flower as well. Determining first to exhibit aconitum, I ask him to take a preliminary glass of sherry. Fleming's tincture might and indeed has been mistaken for this. He drank to, he drank my health. Now, you might think like, okay, Econitum is exhibiting it, maybe means like just chilling. That would be a very fair assumption. Because I was also like, hmm, does this mean he's passing away? Does this mean something else? But then we get to the cue of Fleming's tincture, uh, who is mistaken for, um, in this case, glass of sherry. Now, if we look it up, there is actually a case very well known about Fleming's tincture, that a man accidentally took a vial of Fleming's tincture instead of some sort of other wine medicine that would help an upset stomach, and he unfortunately passed away. So we can, I think, state that like this person has passed away, or at least drank the poison. Now, if you're like, this is not convincing enough for me, I got you. I got you, because the last two sentences of this page are He tasted love with half his mind, nor ever drank the inviolate spring where nighest heaven. And these two last sentences reference um, In Memoriam by Alfred Lord Tennyson. And In Memoriam tends to be there f during funerals, so Honestly, I found that, like, evidence enough that this person, that Sir Paul, passed away. We have some great news. I think that these are, like, also the main points on this page on the clues. There are a few other leads, but a lot of them are more question marks than really answers. And, yeah, we'll just have to figure out how this all fits into a later story. The next page is page 73. So, this is the page. There are a lot, like, yeah, I've had to translate some words because I didn't know, but yeah, this page honestly gave me so many more questions than answers. I didn't know what half of the things meant. Like, half of it was just like, I don't know what you want from me. And the other half was like, I think we mean this and they seem sort of connected, so we're just gonna go with it. So, yeah, let us me give you the main ones. The first clue that we get is my given name was world famous as he inherited one of a bold, subtle, and delightful painter. I googled it, it got Augustus Johnson. Augustus John. Which I was kind of on the fence about, like, okay, but it seems kind of vague. Like, are we sure? Then, the next clue is the Mumpers, which is a painting by... 
Augustus John. So I was like, okay, we are looking for a character either called Augustus or John. I'm pretty sure you've seen John before. Um, maybe there's someone called Augustus. Who knows? So I have to like keep that name in mind for later references. Um, and then we'll have a town called Runnymede, which I don't know what that means. Like, oh no, we just have Runnymede and with one N. And when I googled it, all I got was stuff about Runnymede with double N. And I don't know whether this is like a slight name change or what's going on. But I really couldn't find anything on the one with a single N. So I just kind of leave it at that. I have put it up in the document, but as a lead of like, okay, this seems kind of important to write down somewhere, but I really don't know what we mean. One that we did really help and did really work was the sentence on the E.V. Lucas and non Lucendo principle in men's woods. Listen, like, is the end of a sentence like there were men's woods? Um, now, I googled E.V. Lucas and a non Lucendo principle. E.V. Lucas was a poet, writer, journalist person who, well, anything that really requires writing texts, and apparently he's mostly known for his more humorous texts and poets, po poets, poems. He was a poet who write poems. Um, but he apparently made a lot of really funny ones and that's what he's mostly known for. The second part of this sentence references Lucas and non lucendo, which is Latin for an illogical explanation or absurd derivation. Did I just butcher Latin? Yes. I want to say like sort of sorry. Who am I gonna apologize to? The ancient Romans? We're just gonna continue on. Well, there are two explanations to this. One, it's a really big woods, but there's like kind of an uncommon place to have it. Or it's like sarcastically meant that there's an immense wood, but like it's very small. Honestly, it could go either way. I have no idea. Other than these, I just didn't really have any sort of clues on this page. So I felt like, oh, these are like proper leads or I know exactly what it's referencing to or I understand what's going on. This page just uh, didn't help at all. Now, if you thought that like figuring out that there has been another murder is like the only surprise I have, <laughs> you know, I found two pages who are part, or like following each other up. First, we have page 23, which is followed up by page 87. So we see here at like page 23, that there is like a poem and then on page 87, it continues on. So yeah, with some Google work, I figure out that like page 87 was basically a continuation of the poem on page 23. And they also make sense one after the other, which is also great. Um, so first to page 23, main thing, we know that this story is taking place in 1930. Um, because it talks about bill to, the bill to solve the traffic problem and bill to improve secondary schools. Um, in 1930, there was an bill to, in the government to solve some of the traffic problems and one regarding secondary school and increasing the age that children had to be in school. Then the next one talks about, I find it hard to reconcile my, reconcile my guest with the Duchess of that name. Someone has a guest and there's like a duchess. And I was like, there are a lot of duchess in the world. So like, I don't know which one we're talking about. Then we get a lot of smaller different clues and they all kind of refer to Elizabeth Bear, Elizabeth Bear Browning, which eventually she's someone which is all referenced is has written a poem called The Duchess May. Okay, so the poem that I was talking about is called Rhyme of the Duchess May meaning that Duchess of the same name for, uh, references to me. Also, I think that they are talking about a uh, murder of a woman. A little bit later in the page, there is a reference to a poem by Oscar Wilde, and the poem itself um, talks about a woman with golden hair who has passed away, um, and this same imaginary is used in the poem by Elizabeth Bear Browning. So we can assume that they're talking about the murder of one of the women, which may mean, I think, the cleaning lady that we, that was murdered in the last, like in the last video I mentioned that. And I think she was murdered as well because she came in and 
she saw what had happened. She was like the second victim that night and I think May was also involved in that as well. Yeah, I think that those are the main ones. There are a few smaller ones, but again, I have no connections with this, with these clues, so I just don't really feel like I know where they belong in the story anyway. Then you come to my favorite page, page 87, which was filled with clues of things like, I think this is a clue, and I didn't understand any of them at all. Like, all of a sudden we're talking about Byzantine beauty, and I'm like, who's that? Who is Sanders? With his lunar visit? Like, what is he, a werewolf? I don't... And honestly, I don't know. Again, Henry mentioned. I think the only thing, the only thing that I feel like I'm 100% sure this is what it means is one part of the sentence. Twist the trees in front of a thick windowed little house and a foreground of exquisitely colored vegetation, vegetation with some what the consistency of fur stools, and which I think is referencing Reed, that a special case in Bloom where it's coming out, it kind of looks like fur stools. And that's the only thing that I have on that page. This is happening after the murder because the main route, like the POV, it is funny, it is rather fearful to feel a wet skeleton hand putting hers into mine. So maybe like the one that passed away or was his former lover or was this other woman's former lover? We don't know. Why, I wonder, not that I can really be skeleton yet, it must be worse, a low sem mess of detestable putrescence. So he knows where it is, he, it's pretty shortly after. But yeah, that's all I have. And that was also kind of it for today. I did really enjoy it, especially because I found some really important new clues. I feel like it's half one half, half very important new clues, other half just pure question marks. But you know what? basically my life anyway. If you like this video, you know what to do. You can subscribe and also comment like because that does really help out with the algorithm. Um, and then see you guys again next time for some more murder mysteries solving madness. Okay, thank you for watching. <laughs>